Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about the NBA and NFL, as the NFL is coming down to the final couple weeks of the season, and the NBA is coming into Christmas, the Christmas games, which is a great time of year for basketball, and fun to watch. I might also slightly tap into like college basketball, and maybe college football as well, but yeah. So here we'll start with um, Steph Curry. Um, I was watching this Celtics Warriors game, which was on um, TNT, which was a big game this week, and I was surprised the Warriors played a really good game, and they haven't really been doing that much this year. They haven't been that good of a team, but Steph Curry clutched up, and yeah, here are the highlights. Davis to Paul. Maybe they'll get a three out of it. Curry three. Oh yeah, also Clay also had six threes in this game, so the Warriors duo is back. Like they're both playing pretty well right now. And the Warriors are they could make some noise later on the season. I don't know how good they can be this year though, but it's also a little too early to tell. But yeah. Way to draw a charge. Oh, here we go. Look at this. <laughs> yes, sir. Night, night. He said night, night to everyone. Um, what a game for Steph Curry, though. 33 points, 20 in the fourth and OT. Six threes, five of them, I think, in that stretch, which was a bit crazy. Um, and yeah, so we'll talk about the NBA now, and then we'll go into the NFL. So, um, obviously, today is the 22nd, so there's not, there's three days until the playoffs, or not playoffs, and <laughs> what am I saying? Until the Christmas Day games. Um, three days till the Christmas Day games. Those are Bucks, Knicks, Warriors, Nuggets, Celtics, Lakers, Sixers, Heat, and Mavs, Suns. So, um, right now, if we just look at the stats, Embiid's averaging 35 points a game. And, obviously, right, the people want to give Jokic the MVP, right? Jokic is a great player, but, like, Embiid's actually having a better season by, than Jokic this year, like, by a good amount, actually. Well, not a good amount, but definitely a better season than Jokic. He's also got the Sixers 19-8. and eight, Nuggets are 19-10. and 10. Very similar records, but yeah. Um, so I think right now the MVP is Joel Embiid. I think on the ladder it said Embiid, Jokic, Giannis, then Luka. But I think Luka could be higher. He's averaging like a ridiculous amount of points recently. So, yeah. Um, but just looking at the Lakers, right? They're 15-15 and 15 and have not been playing well since the play-in tournament. They only have one win in that stretch. 
and they're one in five, yeah. So they also have the Thunder tomorrow, and then on Christmas the Celtics. I feel like I don't know who's gonna win that Christmas game just for this one reason, right? The Lakers play on Christmas a lot, and they every year they're just good, right? Let me let me see. Um. Twenty four wins, which is actually very ironic because that's Kobe's um number. Wait, was this when was this article posted? Alright, yeah. So recently, right? Alright, they've lost their last two, but they've both been competitive games. And then they won their previous or lost two of their pre won two of their previous three against the Mavericks and Warriors. So I just I don't know. They're pretty competitive on Christmas Day, so I can't really tell you if they're going to win. I do think the Celtics will win that, though, but don't count out the Lakers in that game. Um, then Bucks, Knicks, Bucks, Warriors, Nuggets, I don't know. Sixers over the Heat, and Mavs over Suns. So now let's look at the standings. Um, the Pistons have lost 25 in a row. Um, and also, in Detroit, um, Wingstop made an, came up with an idea, which was, for every Detroit Pistons win, um, they'll give out five free wings, and... Well, Detroit's not winning a single game, so nobody's getting their free food, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, and yeah, so I mean, Wingstop's winning; they're not make they're not selling free food, so that's that's good for them. <laughs> no, um, but the Pistons are really bad right now, and they might be one of the worst teams in NBA history. Um, like Cade's playing well. But that's basically it. I mean, he's not playing well enough, obviously. But how much can you ask of one guy, you know? Like, the Timberwolves are 21-6, and six, just like the Celtics. Thunder are 18-8. and eight. Last year, nobody would have thought those te- two teams would be at the top. Except the Timberwolves, on paper, last year, looked like they could be a team that could do this at some point. Because, like, on paper, if you look, they have Towns, Edwards... Go Bear, like Towns, Edwards, Go Bear, Conley. On paper, that's a stacked team. But um, Edwards has gotten a lot better this year. Chet's playing well for the Thunder, as well as Jalen Williams. Giddy is having a down year, but that could also be because of his uh, off the court stuff. Um, and yeah. So, it's been an interesting start of the season. Actually, a little bit more entertaining than most start of the seasons have been. Because the Magic being in fourth, and the Timberwolves and Thunder being in first and second in the West, it's just a new era, basically. There's teams that have not been good for a long time that are actually good. Um, And I watched both... The Celtics Warriors and Grizzlies Pelicans jaw hit a buzzer beater. So yeah, these games have been really fun to watch. And I feel like this season's just been an overall just a fun season. Um College basketball. Let's take a look quickly. So JMU is playing Morgan State right now. They're on they're one of the only undefeated teams left. Terrence Edwards has twenty three points. Uh, he's averaging 16, 5, and 3 on the season. I don't really know this guy that much. I don't know this team that well. I just know they're playing well. Um, U of H is undefeated still. And James Madison and Old Miss. So those are the undefeated teams left. Um, 
Big games this week. Kentucky wins by 19 against Louisville. Sky Clark had 20 points. Huntley Hatfield had 16. I know both of those guys. They're pretty good. Antonio Reeves, I saw him play in um in London because um, they had a Kentucky-Michigan game last year in London. He's good. Justin Edwards and DJ Wagner are very good players. Well, rating why like not rating. Um they have great potential. Wagner was supposed to be the number one prospect in the draft coming into last year, but he's dropped a bit. And Edwards was one last year. He's dropped a tiny bit. But they're both very good still. Um Villanova beat Creighton and Seton Hall beat Yukon. So yeah, the Big East is a bit chaotic. Uh, Duke. So Filipowski is one of the best players in the country. But, um, yeah. So right now, the best teams, in my opinion, are Arizona, Houston, Kansas, and Purdue. Right? Oklahoma's looking good. Ole Miss is an 11 0, but who have they beaten? Troy, Cal, Mount St. Mary's. All right, well, they beat Memphis. They beat Memphis. That's a pretty big win, but not enough to put yourself top 10 because Ole Miss historically isn't a big basketball program. They're, they've had an easy schedule this year, but still being an 11-0 and at the start of the season is pretty impressive. Uh, college basketball doesn't really get hype until like the end of January or mid-January. Like, unlike college football where people are watching all year round because there's less games, but, yeah. Like, all, all season round. Um, Creighton, wait. Okay, so they moved. Or no, Creighton's a 12 seed and they lost to Aaron Dixon. Who, Eric Dixon, who is this? All right, well, he's a good player, too. He's averaging 15 a game. Okay, so, yeah, we're done with uh, basketball. Now let's move on to football. The Rams beat the Saints 30-22 to in a big game last night. Chris Olave, 123 yards, 9 catches. Derek Carr, 27-40, 319, and 3 touchdowns and a pick. Shahid with a touchdown, 70 yards. Great game for Stafford and Williams and Nakua. I have their highlights right here. But um, let's look at the playoff picture as of now. Scenarios too. Yeah, CBS does a good job with this stuff. So AFC standings. We got Baltimore, Miami, Kansas City, and Jacksonville. One, two, three, four. Then top three wild card teams are Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Indiana. Indiana, Cle- Cincinnati, Houston, and Buffalo are all eight and six, as well as Jacksonville. So there's five eight and six teams fighting for five spots, which is great. Or fighting for three spots. So two of them will be left out. Pittsburgh and Denver seven and seven. Las Vegas six and eight. Chargers five and nine, Tennessee, New York, and New England out. So, Chargers play the Bills this week. Bills should win that. So the Chargers should be eliminated. Um, here are the scenarios. So Baltimore will clinch the AFC North with a win plus a, a Cleveland loss or a tie, or a Baltimore tie and a Cleveland loss. So basically this week, if they want to clinch it, they have to win or tie. They can't lose. Baltimore can't lose. But if they lose and Cleveland loses, then they probably still clinch it. Wait, no, 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 they don't. Never mind. Uh, Miami can clinch the AFC East division title with a win and a Buffalo loss or tie. And a buff, or Miami tie or Buffalo and Buffalo loss. So basically, I was looking at something and it was showing me the Miami versus Buffalo race for the division, and Buffalo actually has a chance to win it, like a good chance too. 
because Miami's last three are pretty tough games. Like, let's take a look here. Miami's schedule in the last three are Dallas, Baltimore, and Buffalo. Like, goddamn, that's three really tough games. Well, the Bills have to just go up against L.A. and New England. So, essentially, the Dolphins could very easily lose their next two. And the Bills should be able to win their next two. And then they go into Miami for the last game of the season to decide the division. So there's a very good chance the Bills make it out first in the division. Um, now, playoff berth, Miami wins. If they win, they clinch. They tie and a lot of losses and ties happen and they make it through as well. Uh, Kansas City can clinch the division with a win or a tie and a Denver loss. So, wow, they can... Oh, yeah, because Denver lost last week. Cleveland can clinch it with a win and a Cincinnati loss and a Denver loss or tie and a Buffalo loss and a Miami win or tie and an Indiana loss or tie. This is ridiculous. This is going to be... a I don't think Cleveland's clinching a playoff berth yet. Because it's a lot of moving pieces to happen. Um, so yeah, AFC is looking very interesting. I Las Vegas could still make the playoffs if they just win almost all of their games. Um, the one seed, is that what that means? No, that means division. Um, so San Francisco is 11-3, followed by Dallas and Detroit at 10-4. And 7-7 seven and seven in first place is Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers. And fifth, the wild card spot, are the Philadelphia Eagles, who have lost three in a row, heading into their easiest stretch of the season. Um, Rams, with that win, moved to 8-7 and seven and the sixth seed. And now the seventh seed is the, right now, is uh, Minnesota at 7-7. Seven and seven. Just outside are Seattle at 7-7. Seven and, seven. and then... At 7 and 8 are the Saints at 9. And then the Packers and Falcons, Giants and Bears, and the last three teams. So, San Francisco clinches the one seed, which comes with which with which will give them a bye and home field advantage with a win and a Philly, Dallas, and Detroit loss. Which I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Detroit would have to lose to Minnesota. Very hap- very possible. Dallas will have to lose to Miami. Very possible. And Philly will have to lose to the Giants, which... Um, oh, it's in Philly. I think they're going to win that. But just seeing how they've been playing the last couple weeks, they haven't been that good, the Eagles. So the Giants could make some noise. I mean, they had a really bad game last week against the Saints, but... You never know. Giants could bounce back. Um, Detroit can clinch the NFC North division with a Detroit win or tie. Oh, wow. So they win with... If they win or tie, they're in. And Detroit can clinch a playoff berth with a Seattle loss or tie. Um... Yeah, so that loss for the Saints really hurts their playoff chances. Um, Here we go. Postseason probability. Entering week 16. This was last week. So. All right, look at how drastic this could be. So, if the Bengals lose this week, so right now it's 47%, right? If they win, they move up to 66%. If they lose, they drop to 20 And obviously they can't win the one seed anymore. That would belong to either the Browns, Chiefs, Dolphins, or Ravens. Definitely not the Browns, though. 2% is a little too low. And I don't think they're that team. Right? The Browns with a loss, though, don't hurt their playoff chances much. I mean, 78 is... 
not 100, and it's 21 less than 99, which is what would happen if they won, but yeah. If you look at the NFC, um, yeah, let's look at the Saints here, right? If they won this game this week, they would move up to 70%. But they decided, they well, not decided, they just lost, and that dropped them all the way down to 24, which really, really hurts their playoff chances. Um, and then we go down here. Mathematically, the Giants have less than a 1% chance to make it. And with a win, it goes up to 2, which is pretty funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, and this is for division. See, the Dolphins... Have 73% because, well, I mean, they've been good this year, and they have a two-game lead. However, they've got two very easy games, and then the Dolphins. They could easily both end up 10-6 and six before that game. Uh, Ravens, however, well, both of these teams have an average, like, schedule. And, yeah. So now let's look at some highlights from the Rams game. Kyron Williams first. The, uh, first, first offensive play of the night, Kyron the Williams. The running back. Is the running back. It's Cooper Cup in motion. And here's Williams is averaging over five yards per carry. Yeah, actually, so he's been playing incredibly well right now. Like, the caption even tells you. So, like, he's had less games than almost every running back that's been good played. And he's second in yards behind McCaffrey. Like, that's insane. He's played 10 while the rest, or 11, while the rest have played like 14. Kukunakua, that's number 17 in motion going back and forth. A little flip here to Kyron Williams. Whew. He breaks tackles, and he does that a lot. And takes it out to the 38-yard line where Colin Sanders stops him for a game halfway through the quarter. Nice little beat on their home turf. Exploits it. All right, actually, I'm going to, yeah, so that's a bit of what he done, uh, what he's done. Um, now let's look at Stafford because he's the quarterback. He must have had a, he had a hun- uh, 320 yards, no picks. So he probably had a good game. That's caught on the outside here by Tyler Higby, the tight end. Fools his way down the sideline out to close to the 35-yard line in the first down. Three different movements in the shifting in motion, and then a side-on pass to Nakua, and off goes the rookie for a first down. Extra pressure, caught on the run. Stafford puts it right on the money to Demarcus Robinson. Each calling their plays in this situation. Okay, yeah. So it was just a big game from them. Um, oh, okay, and there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is uh, MVP odds. So, I've been having this debate with a lot of people about if, um, what's his name? If Brock Purdy is that good, right? Or if he's worth being up here in the MVP ladder. He is the favorite, right? He's the quarterback of the best team in football, Right? However, if you take him out of the equation, right, consistently, there's only been one game in his tenure as the quarterback where he's supposed to be the starter where he has not played. That was that one game where he came in, and he was the third string, right? Garoppolo was also hurt. Mullins was injured, or I think it was Mullins, right? They put him in, and then they had Josh Johnson in, and then he got injured. So, obviously, everyone ended up hurt. So, that's not really a true way to define it. But when McCaffrey went down was when the Niners lost their three games. Like, it was in that stretch. And losing McCaffrey, among other targets, like Debo, Kittle. Well, no, Kittle was healthy. Debo was also injured, and offensive lineman Trent Williams was also injured. So technically, it's not McCaffrey that was out that hurt it. It was him and, like, Brock Purdy didn't have as many weapons. And obviously, the offense wasn't the same. He produced still, like, pretty well. 
but not well enough. So in my opinion, the MVP should be McCaffrey. Tyreek Hill should be way higher than Trevor Lawrence and Jalen Hurts and Mahomes. And Allen, for that matter. Because Tyreek's been ridiculous this year. I mean, now he's injured, right? But going into that week, he's been incredible. Tua should be higher, too. I don't know why he's behind Josh Allen. Because last year, Tua got injured, and then Skylar Thompson was the starter, right? It was Skylar Thompson with the same weapons as Tua. And they lost every single game. Except for, like, one, I think. And that just shows how good Tua actually is. Because all those weapons were still there. Tua knew how to use those weapons and didn't really lose ever. I don't. I think he's only lost like five games as a starter with the Dolphins or something like that. So, I just think like people say, oh yeah, Brock Purdy gets all his yards from yards after catch, right? Mostly from checkdowns, right? But, if you go here, Brock Purdy... Um, here, this is what I'm trying to find. So he averages 9.9 .9 net air yards per throw. He's ninth in... In um, yards per completed air yards per completion, and eighth in overall yards in yards after the catch per completion. So that means he's throwing it down the field, and people are beating out other players. So like, like people say that yes, he has a ton of yards per catch, which is true. Yards after the catch. I'm not saying that his weapons aren't good because they're incredible. However, he's also a legit deep thrower. Like, he can actually throw. Like, I don't... Like, look, they haven't been getting as much yards after catch as they have in the past outside of last night. That was three months ago. But still, like... Right, this was last year, I think. This year he's... Or no, this is this year. But, like, he's been good this year, too. And he's, I think, jumped up to third in yards per completion. Like, net air yards. And I think that begs the question, like, is Brock Purdy elite or is he not? Like, I think he is. But I also do know that, like, look, McCaffrey's top in yards total. Purdy is the most passing touchdowns. That doesn't mean that... Like, if Purdy has the most passing touchdowns, that does mean that he has to be also slinging it. Like, how many of the Niners' touchdown passes All right, whatever. It's not going to show me. But, yeah, it's going to be an interesting week. You definitely should tune in to the... If you want to know what's going on, this is, like, the biggest game of the year. 11-3 Ravens versus 11-3 Niners on Christmas Day at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can stream it on many different sites in the U.S. However, um, if you're somewhere else... Somewhere, probably. But yeah, it's going to be a really big game. And also, the Ravens feel disrespected as they're like six-point underdogs, which is a bit crazy. I get that the Niners are the hottest team in football, but the Ravens need some respect. They're playing really well as well. And yeah. So, thanks for watching, guys. And I hope I'll see you next time. And give me some other ideas in the comments if you want me to do another like sports recap video or... Like, talk about a specific topic. Like, what do you want me to do? 
Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time.